you know, Taylor Sheridan, he had just, uh, he had just called, he, he found Cody's phone number and just called him. He's like, Hey man, y'all want to come up and, you know, shoot in this new series we're doing. We were like, dude, we're pretty tired, but yeah, it sounds pretty <laughs> cool. Let's do it if Kevin's in it. You know, if, if Kevin's in it, we should probably go ahead and jump in it. I'm here today talking with Mr. John Jeffers, guitarist of Whiskey Myers. Uh, a phenomenal, phenomenal rock band, country rock band, southern rock band. What do you guys like to to th- to think of it as? We've never really tried to pigeonhole ourselves. Sure. It's just whatever you want to call it. There's right. so, there's so it's kind of it's a conglomerate of stuff. You know, we've been on mm-hmm. we've been on country radio, we've been on rock radio, we've done the charts on the country side, and we've done the charts on the rock side. So it's whatever you want to call it, man. I get it's music. That. It's just music. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just music. Yeah. Well, and I think what n- not a not a better way of like of of defining that sort of idea than like I mean a couple of years ago you guys opened for the Stones. I mean, what a huge yeah. opportunity that had to have been. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. It's kind of hard to top that. You know, <laughs> there's, the- there's been some really. It's it's one of the uh, one of the cool moments. That was the. He- that was the most hectic, coolest day in the world. I bet, I bet. And what, where, now, where, where did that show take place? It was in uh, Chicago at Soldier okay. Field, wow. the Chicago wow. Bears Stadium. That's amazing. That was pretty cool. That's amazing. Yeah. And now, and now we're, cool. we're we're fast forward a couple of years, and you guys are releasing your new album, Tornillo. Am I saying that right? Tornillo. Tornillo. Yeah. Tornillo. That's it. Yeah. Okay, I want to make sure I say it right. Tornillo. Uh, yeah, I'm it, gonna, uh, I'm yeah, yeah. Like we're talking, we're talking a couple of days away from the the album release. How, how how what is it like for you? Like the closer you get to album release day, like I mean, what you guys have been doing this for you know, what fifteen years now? Like like putting albums out as far, yeah. as far as that goes. What's it like as you get close to an album? Man, uh, it's just such a process to get it out, you sure. know. So it's like we're just ready for it to be out for people to here because we've heard it for you know we've listened to it for you know a pretty good while now we're just patiently waiting for everybody else to be able to hear it so you know at this point it's kind of like every other record it's just like let's go let's yeah. get it out but it, it's not that easy you know everybody wants to do it a certain way but there's a lot of competition and you know there's structure and there's a way there's a proper way to put out records and and sometimes you have to have a uh, pretty good patience I get, that. I get that well what's crazy to me is you guys like i did i mean i looked at the numbers and it's like almost every three years, like clockwork, you, you put out a new album. So it's like, you yeah. never stop working. <laughs> right. Yeah. Does it ever feel yeah, that way? <laughs> uh, yeah. And, you know, especially having kids and, and, and family and stuff now, it, it kind of feels that way sometimes, but we're used to it, man. That's that's what we've done. I've been touring since I was 19 or 20. So it's like, that's what we've always done. And, yeah. you know, if, if we sit, stagnant too long i think everybody starts to you know it's like okay what are we doing where are we going you know covid was a a pretty good example for uh, the whole world of course but you know at at a certain point it was like hey this is cool we're getting a break we've never had a break in 15 you know 14 years at that point it was like this is pretty cool by about month two it's like oh well uh what are we doing you know are we are we still sitting at home when are we ever going to go back and tour again you know (laughs) We just get antsy. We're used to it. It seems like you guys really spent that time well, though. I mean, Tornillo is yeah. an incredible album. I've had a chance to listen to it. I'm a huge fan. Like, I, I really enjoy it. Did 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 the the pandemic have a huge effect on the production of this album, the writing and production of this album? I mean, the, the, the reason I asked that is because, you know, like I said, like every three years, like Clockwork, I mean, you guys are just kind of... So I'm curious how this this time in sort of world history shaped what this album became. Yeah. Um, you know, some of those songs were already written. I couldn't say that, you know, not all of them were written during that, but definitely a couple of them, you know, there's a couple of tunes in there that whenever you get in, you dive into the lyrics, you can tell it's got a little bit, you know, there's one or two that may have some more current value to it than, than normal. But, uh, you know, having kids, you know, that showed up a little bit in Cody and mine's writing, you know, but, uh, you know, it's the same stuff. The only thing that we kind of changed is we've always wanted to have brass and horns. Right. And we toured so much. We've always been on tour during records. So we would go into studio, go back on tour and we would flip flop between the both. 
And this time we actually had the time to bring in the horn section and do something we wanted to do for a long time. So uh, we're pretty happy about it. That's really cool. I'll tell you, man, I, the, now, now as we're talking, the most recent single is the wolf and dude, what a song it is burned into my brain already. I'm just like walking around. I'm just like, who in the hell you think? <laughs> like I just got that song like in my head. And I, I would love to know a little bit more, maybe more about it and kind of like the background on that song and where that came from. Right. Yeah. It's, it's got some spank to it. You know, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, I didn't write that. You know, I can't, I can't really speak for Cody. He wrote that song, but uh, you know, I think it, there's a little angst, you know, we've always had this, uh, you know, a sort of a chip on a shoulder, you know, I don't, I don't know whether we grew up that way or if, uh, you know, being in this business and the hardships that you have to go through, you know, sometimes you get a little chip on your shoulder and, you know, uh, sometimes, sometimes it shows up in the lyrics, I would imagine. <laughs> and musically, can I tell you, it reminds me a lot of uh, ZZ Top. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but that's like, for some reason I'm listening to it. I'm just like, what's that riff or what? But it just really reminds me of like a ZZ Top song. I'll, I'll take that. That's cool. <laughs> well, I haven't heard that one yet. Well, I guess I hadn't heard too many yet because I... Go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. Um, do, do you guys like... Do do you have some specific influences that you like to draw from? Like, do, do maybe maybe for you specifically, John, like, do you have like any kind of like standard that you're just like, when I'm in... When I'm trying to kind of get in the, that, that writing vibe or whatever, like, this is kind of what I like to play or like to have around. No, not at all. Zero. Okay. Uh, you know, some of those, uh, I could probably attest for everybody, but okay. those influences definitely come out. You know, they do show up. And then by the end of a product, you're like, you know, one of your buddies will come in and say, hey, I can hear, you know, Led Zeppelin or something came out there. And it's like, wow, I didn't even I didn't even know I was doing that. You know, so no, <laughs> we, we don't have a plan. We haven't had a plan for the music or the business, we just kind of jump in there. There'll be a written song. We jump in a circle. And it's like, whatever comes out, comes out. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think there's ever a plan on the songwriting or a direct influence that we want something to sound like. It's just like, it just kind of happens, man. But, but you can definitely hear those influences that accidentally come out in us for sure. When it comes to dropping an album while you're touring, does that have an effect on mm -hmm. your set list? Do you do you sort of rework and play some of the newer songs or do you just kind of throw in some of those ahead of time? The concert goers are lucky enough to get to hear them and you just kind of stick with it. That's kind of what we've done. We've re restructured a little bit at the beginning of this tour. So we started playing, you know, as certain songs dropped. But, you know, it's about every other day we start debating on other stuff. Usually, you know, we try to we don't get to rehearse too much because we're gone so much. So now we're separated. So if anything comes in, it's on the fly while we're at soundcheck during a show. But yeah, we definitely try to add in different stuff, especially for this drop. I'm sure we'll add in a bunch of surprises. <laughs> right. Uh, people are going to be looking forward to that. Um, um, but before, I, before, before we're done, before I let you go and all that, I want to ask about uh, 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 Yellowstone. Um, popculture.com readers are huge Yellowstone fans. Like that show is really big with, with our audience. And uh, it is super cool that you guys are the whiskey Myers is the only live band to have like performed on the show. And you were on four episodes. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I remember the music has been featured quite a few. No, I, was just, I, was, I remember seeing one of the episodes. I'm I'm fairly caught up on Yellowstone myself, um, um, but but man, that is that had to be a really interesting experience. Yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, uh, you know Taylor Sheridan. He had just uh, he had just called. He he found Cody's phone number and just called him. He's like, "Hey, man, you want to come up and you know shoot in this new series we're doing?" We were like, "Dude, we're pretty tired." But yeah, it sounds pretty <laughs> cool. Let's do it if Kevin's in. You know. If, if Kevin's in it, we should probably go ahead and jump in it. We didn't think too much about it. It was just like, yeah, let's just add it. You know, let's get in there. And it, it sounds cool. And he's supposed to be a pretty good director. So let's get in there and make an appearance. And then let's take our butts back home because we're a little tired. We've been on the road for like a month and a half or something like that. But, yeah, we, we had no idea that it would uh, become as popular as it really did. It is, and it's crazy. I, I had a chance to talk to uh, 
to Ryan Bingham um, earlier mm-hmm. this year. And he, it was funny. It's like kind of a yeah. similar story. He, he said that Taylor had reached out to him and was like, hey, why don't you come check this out? You know, I'm, you know. And he's like, all right, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> and now he's a cast member. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's still acting. <laughs> then it's shot off on his acting career <laughs> right <laughs> but yeah man it was a, it was a cool it was a cool deal i really really appreciate you taking time to chat today john honestly uh uh, uh whiskey myers tornillo is out uh like you said friday july 29th um and it's going to be everywhere and people can it find is. it everywhere streaming services they can go to your social media they can find it they can go to the website download it all that good stuff right Exactly. Anywhere. If you can't find it, something's wrong with you. (laughs) Awesome. Well, John, I really appreciate you taking time today, man. Thank you so much.